a lot of players are just a little bit afraid of them because they've had some bad experiences with them, such as miscues or just, you know, the cue ball just not doing what you intended it to do. So the basic fear is, you know, the fear of making a fool of yourself if there's people watching. So they tend to avoid them, and I think you should take on these challenges head on and stop avoiding them. Because they do come up. Um, we don't always get great position on, you know, the fouling ball. Sometimes we get straight in accidentally. If we, you know, if we played flawless position 24-7, we'd be on the Pro Tour right now beating all these big dogs, right? So trust me, you're not the only one that's going to get accidentally straight in and it doesn't even have to be us it can be off the break you know there's only so much control you have over the break you can get a bad roll and get straight in on the lowest number ball or you know it could be a basic case of our opponent leaving us straight in for whatever reason so it's the fear of the unknown combined with the fear of making a fool of yourself and just looking incompetent, and nobody wants to look incompetent. The problem is that feeling of being gun-shy kind of feeds off itself. If you go at the shot feeling gun-shy, chances are really, really good that you're going to get a little bit nervous, you're going to tense up, and you're not going to have a smooth stroke because you're tensed up which increases the chances of miscuing or just, you know, not following through the right way. And then there's body movement. Um, that's a huge, massive cause of the cue ball simply not doing what you were trying to do with it. Uh, if you miscue and sort of scoop the cue ball off the table, that's almost always caused by your, the tip of your cue actually hitting the table before it's hitting the cue ball. Not good. And that's kind of hard to believe. No, people say, what? what are you talking about? But if you film your, your, you know, your practice routines and you watch it in slow motion with a good camera, you'll see the, the tip of your cue hit the table right before it hit the cue ball. And it kind of just scoops it straight off the table. And yeah, that's, that's always embarrassing, and it can be actually literally dangerous, or it can put holes in your drywall, it's just, and it's noisy, and it's like, oh, Jesus. You know, so if there's anybody in the pool room, they're going to know that you miscued, because, you know, the cue ball's going to be bouncing around on the floor, and then they're going to look over at you like, oh, jeez, who is this dipshit? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares, man, don't worry about it. This would be a good example of when the table calls for a power draw shot. You're straight in on the one, and you need to get to the five, and there's no cross-side bank here. It's also not wise to roll straight up and risk scratching. The best thing to do here, if you need to get straight in on the five, is just to draw it straight back to the top short rail and bounce off at a mirrored angle on the five. And this one's pretty simple and a good one to practice because you don't need any right or left English. It's just straight bottom on this. So the first thing you want to do is draw the line straight back from the one ball and see where it intersects the short rail and just make sure that the mirrored angle, which is the opposite angle from that one ball line, is on line for the five ball. And it is, so we can go ahead and shoot this. In this one we're shooting a four and we're also straight in and the big the big difference with this shot is there's a whole lot more distance between the cue ball and the object ball so you have to keep that cue ball spinning backwards all the way back and we're shooting to bounce off this rail here but you don't want to bounce too hard so there's a little bit of timing involved here because you don't want to go too far down the table on the five ball or even worse is getting stuck behind the eight ball here. So you have to be careful of that. So it's a little bit more fluid than that last one because you have less margin of error.
And here's what we have in this layout. And I know because it's a simple layout that if, if other than this first shot, if I can get from the one to the two, I'm out. I'm going to win this game. But getting from the one to the two is easier said than done, especially when you start talking about getting the right position on the three to get to the four. So if you just hit a stop shot on this one, you're good to play a safety, or you can roll up a little bit on the one and shoot the two and get safe like that too. But I'm going for it. Now if I just shoot this with center bottom, to draw it straight back, it, all it's going to do is, is hit the right hand side rail. And if you don't scratch and you bounce off, you're liable to get stuck behind the three. And even if you come out towards center table, you're still going to be stuck on the tuba and you're going to wind up playing a safety anyway. So if you're going to play a safety, you might as well just hit a stop shot on the one and take it from there. So we know we're putting bottom on it, but bottom center is out. Uh, so let's take a look at bottom left and see what that does. And we'll break away to a new graphic right here. So we'll call this ugly brown line the Q stick, okay? It's this a shaft of the Q. And obviously we're putting a whole lot of left on it, but what you can't see is we're also putting a whole lot of bottom on it. And you know, if you watch enough of my videos, left hand English spins the cue ball clockwise. If you look straight down on the cue ball, it's spinning it clockwise. That's left hand English. Right hand English will spin the cue ball counterclockwise. So let's take a look at what happens when this cue ball comes back with clockwise English on it. And it hits this rail. And just to illustrate a point, I put treads on this... Uh, <laughs> on this cue ball um, and when it comes back it's still spinning clockwise when it comes back off the one ball and it hits this rail it is absolutely going to die it's, it's going to kill the natural angle coming off this rail so this is this would be natural just straight bottom and this would be bottom left or clockwise spin which would be great if we were trying to get on the seven ball, but we're not. We're trying to get all the way back down table on the two ball. And by the way, that clockwise spin will also greatly decrease the momentum of the cue ball. So it's just going to die and just trickle off that rail because it's actually gripping that rail like it wants to stay up the table. So the only thing left is bottom with right hand English on it or counterclockwise spin, right? That's right, but it's not a normal amount of bottom right. We are going to the extreme, and the reason we have to go to the extreme is because we still have to avoid this six ball. Now, normally I wouldn't put this much right on it, and I would shoot for right about here on, on the right-hand side rail and just kind of try to bounce lightly off this rail to get right on the two. But for obvious reasons, we can't do that. The six is in the way, and even if we get past the six, the eight is in the way. So that right-hand side rail is just eliminated altogether because if we just put a little bit more right on it, now we're going to flirt with the scratch in that bottom right-hand corner. So it's as extreme as it gets here, and, and the target is uh, the bottom short rail here, and just bouncing lightly off of that to get right on the two. So it all comes down to knowing what this cue ball is doing, otherwise you're just not going to be able to do it right. And if you switch sides, like I'm about to show you a couple of examples on a real pool table, it's the opposite, and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. So here we are shooting the same shot at the other end, and this time to grip that rail, we need the cue ball to be spinning clockwise. So it's extreme bottom left.
And now we're going to shoot the five ball in the left hand bottom pocket. And you know, it's still the same shot, but we have to go back to use an extreme bottom right. And because we need the cue ball spinning counterclockwise when it comes back and hits that right. I must be an extremist because it's one of my favorite shots. And not not that you know I go looking for it, but you do find yourself in this position. It's also a stroke straightener if you do it right. So here's one more example of the same shot. Again, right hand English. Thing. James doesn't last long here. Uh, I think he saw something that uh, made him bail out. But after about a half hour play, he uh, he said, no, nah, no more. So just consider this a quick uh, entertainment break. This is the last game of this match. And then we'll go right back. And I'm going to show you a common mistake the players make when drawing the ball. And then I'm going to show you some examples of some of the best players in the world and what they do. Yeah, I got to go do some work. Here's a common thing that happens is that people can't see because it happens so darn quick. So I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to show it to you first, see if you can catch it, and then we're going to watch it again. And keep in mind, I'm trying to get all the way back up table on that nine ball that's sitting in the middle of the rail. Well, that was just totally weak. So let's replay it, zoom in a little bit, slow it down, see what happens. I'm cooling nice and low. Um, I'm a little bit jacked up here, and everything seems to be fine. But on closer examination, when I when I go through this cue ball, I'm actually not anything but center ball. So I'm not hitting the cue ball where I'm aiming the cue ball. And the result is because I am jacked up here. I'm actually wedging the cue ball into the table. And I'm getting a jump effect. Take a good look at that cue ball. You see the shadow under it. You just see it bounce down. I'm actually hitting a jump shot. In there.
example of the same exact thing. And you just can't see it because it happens so fast, but trust me, it's the same thing. So if this is you, there's there's absolutely no doubt that you're dying to know the reason for this so you can stop doing it. And I'll tell you, it's caused by dropping your elbow right before the point of impact on the cue ball. So you're dropping your elbow on, on the grip arm, and that's causing the back of the cue to go down and the tip of the cue to come up a little bit so you're not hitting where you're intending to hit your hidden center ball. So now that you're conscious of this, you simply have to stop doing it. You can try moving up a little bit closer to the cue ball. You know, if you have a long follow through, your elbow and therefore your grip hand is going to drop eventually, but it doesn't have to drop before you hit the cue ball. That's the problem. It's prematurely dropping. You can also try tightening up that shoulder muscle a little bit, and that will help you stay conscious and aware of this too. You might be wondering why I didn't get more into actual physical technique with your stroke and your grip and your elbow and everything else. And it's because every player does things a little bit different, and that includes the greatest players in the world. And there is no one-size-fits-all. There is no actual one way that will work for all players. So beware of, of the instructor that says you're doing it wrong when what you're doing is working. Some guys jack up a little bit, some guys like to keep a level cue, some guys uh, put their bridge a little bit closer to the cue ball so they follow through more. Some guys keep a very flimsy grip. Some guys use a, a, a slip stroke, and here's a perfect example of Johan Chu is one of the greatest players in the world. The cue actually slips through his hand as he's stroking through a draw shot. And it's amazing to watch if you actually take your focus off what the cue ball and the object ball is doing and focus more on his grip and his wrist. You can see the cue sliding through his hand. So he chokes up a little bit, and then he as he's following through and as he's shooting the ball, the cue is slipping through his grip hand, and he grabs it at the butt and then pulls it out of the way. And it's called a slip stroke. Um, this might work for you. I don't know. You can try it and see what happens. But the point is, everybody is a little bit different. So you have to set some time aside and actually work on it and experiment a little bit and see what's, what works for you. Especially if it's not working for you, what you're doing is just not working. You might want to try different things that different players are doing from Chua to Bustamani to Johnny Archer to Buddy Hall and just really examine these guys and, and pay attention to what their grip hand is doing.